pizza that we will be making in the Breville today. It's just going to be um, I, a pepperoni, green pepper, onion, mozzarella kind of pet pizza that we make quite frequently here. Um, I will be using, I'm taking the shortcut and I'm not making my own pizza dough. I'm going to be using this bistro pizza crust that we tend to like here. I've got some mozzarella cheese, olive oil, Italian seasonings, pepperoni, um, onions, green peppers, and some pizza sauce that my husband has gotten for me. Usually, if I don't have the pizza sauce, I will use marinara spaghetti sauce. That works too. Just add a little bit more Italian seasoning to it and it, it works like a charm. So we're going to start off by putting a little bit of olive oil on to my pizza pan. Wait, got something on it. There we go. And I'm going to scrape it around here. Those are my dogs. They love to cook with me. <laughs> and just like that. Then you take out your pizza crust, just like that, and it yeah, I have to like work with it for a little bit to get to get it going, but once it does, it's great. There we go. So it's a little it's a little stiff, but I'm telling you, I think it's easier than making pizza dough by hand, especially when they have so many things out there to choose from. My son is not a big fan of this one. He likes the Pillsbury one. It's a little thicker, and that's what he likes. I'm. A, this is a thin crust, so if you're more of a thin crust fan, then this is the pizza crust for you. So, now, all you do is take your pizza, flip it over, you have parchment paper on one side, and just peel off that parchment paper and you are good to go. No tossing it up in the air, nothing. Easy peasy. All right, the best part of this particular pizza is you have, because it's, the Breville is a um, convection oven, this pizza crust has directions for a convection oven. How lucky is that? So I'm going to put that over there so I can use that later. The next thing I like to do, I like to do a little added step here um, and put a little bit of olive oil on the, the pizza crust on the top and spread that around too. It adds a, I don't know, a little flavor or something. <laughs> it's good. I like it better that way. And it's probably bad for me, but boy, does it taste a lot better. So, putting that on, you probably could put some, at this point, garlic salt on top of it if you like and give it more of a garlic flavor. My family is not big on the garlic. Okay, here we go. This pizza crust also gets, sometimes gets some um, air pockets in it. So if you see that, just know you're gonna, it's gonna bubble up. But it's also yummy. <laughs> so after that, you add your sauce for your tomato. For your pizza, sauce for your pizza, and you just kind of drizzle it around, just like that. Now you can put any toppings on your pizza you would like. This is just what I happen to have in the fridge today. Now, then you just kind of smoosh it around. Don't really know what this terminology would be for this and just kind of spread it all around. Put a little bit more. There we go. I like to spread it to the edges. Feels like my pizza's bigger. <laughs> okay. Then normally I do not get 
my mozzarella in shredded, already shredded. Normally I like to throw that baby in the food processor and shred it up by hand. That way you don't have any of the stuff that helps keep the cheese separated in it. I have a good friend of mine who has, she has gluten, she has a gluten free diet and some of the cheeses, the shredded cheeses, has a form of gluten in it and she can't even eat it when normally she could have cheese. So ever since I heard that, I changed my whole opinion on it and we, I shred the cheese. I shred it up so it's nice. And it tastes better, I think. So I really do like it shredded from, for me to shred it personally. And I usually, as soon as I buy it, I shred it in food processor. Which is sometimes not necessarily all that much fun because it is kind of a pain to clean. But, it is, you know, today I'm skipping a step and I am using the store-bought shredded cheese. And, you know, should be okay. I do like cheese, as you can see. Now, my husband loves pizza, but he loves pizza with like everything on it. Mushrooms, green peppers, onions, every kind of meat you can think of. So this is not his favorite, this is not his favorite pizza. I'm going to throw some onions and green peppers. I use my chopper for my veggies. Just however much you want. My green peppers. There you go. I'm going to put some Italian seasoning on it, just however, sprinkle it up around so it gives it a little oomph. And then I'm going to put some pepperoni. Gotta have pepperoni on pizza. <laughs> But my family, on the other hand, would not. And I would just love to try some of the just plain vegetable. Instead of using tomato sauce, use the tomatoes. I, I would love to try that. So I'm going to have to make my own personal pan pizzas to do that. But this, they, they will eat. Okay. This is our pizza and I'm going to with, with using the Breville you have settings for the Breville and you have a pizza setting so that's what I'm going to use I'm gonna be right back I'm gonna turn the Breville on and it's gonna preheat The Breville's preheated. We're going to put this in. Notice the timer stops as soon as you open the, um, the door, but you're losing all your heat, so you don't want to spend a lot of time doing that. Just showing you. So I'm going to, you have these temperature gauges in your time. I'm going to, going to move it back up a little bit so it'll stay warm since, oops, since I showed you. Now, the Breville, if you notice, up here, it comes with this really beautiful cutting board. 
but it's a little pricey so I got it one at Bed Bath Beyond for probably about $30 less so and it does just the same job it's helping to keep the heat in so it won't get hot in your kitchen and as you can see it's doing a good job I have my my rack to put my hot pan on and since there's Teflon on the pizza pizza um, pan I'm gonna use I'm gonna have it slide off on some wood and cut it there because I don't want to scrape up my pan and that will scrape it up you don't want to do that you have different settings over here to where you would place your rack and you just I have mine on the pizza and that we will be waiting for the pizza to get done while I'm waiting I started to make my tea to go with it and my Capresso I've had that for years <laughs> it's much easier to make tea that way than put it in the pan wait for it, the water to heat up it's presto done it's got ice in it the only thing you need to worry about that is the glass container is really thin so be careful putting ice in it I broke it once got a replacement so I will see you when the pizza is done as you can see the Breville is almost finished with my pizza it's looking really good I'm gonna put turn the light on so you can see when it well it's gonna be done in 30 some seconds the light comes on anyway and see how it's bubbling and oh my gosh it looks good so I'm excited about that. I um, I forgot to tell you that if you use the the pan for the middle, it has a magnet in it, and when you open the door, it comes right out, which is oh so cool. I love that because I wouldn't have to use this little tool, but since it's at the bottom, I have to use my tool. And that's the sound it makes. My dog loves, as I've told you before, any type of technology, noise, heat, goes bonkers on. So, use your tool to pull this out. It's hot, obviously. Get your oven mixed. Place it on the cooling rack. Push that back in, and it's off. Now you can see that we have toast, bagel, broil, bake, roast, warm, pizza, proof, air fry, reheat, cookies, slow cook, and dehydration mode, which is pretty impressive. It does everything. But I still use my Ninja for slow cook. That's, that's all. I, I will always use my Ninja. But anyway, if you notice, at the bottom, People will disagree with me because at the bottom they have, it's a beautiful drip pan. It's shiny, it's beautiful, but with the research I've done on it, it is really hard to clean. So I went ahead and put that Gotham steel um, oven rack where you just place it down on the oven. And I use that and that's way easier to clean. You just rinse it basically and it comes right off and plop it back in now people told me that the shiny part of the drip pan helps to to air fry helps with the air frying I'm not sure if that's necessarily true <laughs> but they've said that I still my air frying is okay I don't have a problem with it so my pizza is cooling off but before I get started, I want to show you what I, my last minute step will be. There's my pizza pan that I'm going to use to cut. Now, I did get, for my lovely husband, I got the Air, the Aero Garden for Christmas. And... I, we started the herb garden and the herb garden went crazy and grew and grew and grew so this is a piece that I took off all you do is you put it in water 
and it just roots on its own. The other part I put in the dirt already and it's growing like crazy outside. But I leave this inside and I just pick off a few pieces here and there. And then I take my scissors, my lovely scissors over here. And I just come over here and I make some beautiful little ribbons. Just like that. Now if you notice, it kind of gets stuck on in there. These scissors came with a great tool to help with that. I try not to cut my fingernails off. So, what you do is you take this tool. And you, you know it's funny because I did not realize I even had it until after the fact. And then you just slide it out. Is that not great? I love it. I love it. I love it. So then you turn it this way. Same thing. Stick it in. Shoo, gone. Perfect. I didn't like these scissors when I first got them, but love them now. Just because of that little tool. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them, this on here. Love fresh basil. Oh my goodness, it smells good. So let me move my basil. Time to switch over. And there we go. Beautiful pizza. Came off the pan super easy. I'm going to sprinkle some of that basil on top. Whoops. Or just clump it on. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I can't wait to eat it. All right. Now here's the pizza cutter. Or pizza cutter. So, um, I'm going to start. Season. I don't even know what kind of pizza cutter it is, but it's pretty awesome. I got the really long pizza cutter that you kind of rock back and forth. That thing was horrible. Please do not waste your money on that. And here we go. Let's get a plate. And plate this lunch up. Let's see here. Oops. Doesn't that look good? Looks good to me. And here's my iced tea. <laughs> Perfect lunch. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to take a bite. I wish you were here. You could see the crust. Let me show you the back of the crust so you know it's not like, not cooked. Oh my gosh. That's good. Oh, it's wonderful. Woo! Love my pizza! Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you make homemade pizza yourself. It was great. Thank you.